everyone and welcome to a new video. This video was actually supposed to be about making a 1930s inspired ensemble out of that amazing D Luna Venus fabric that I showed in a previous video as well as a bright green stretch twill that I had in my stash. The reason you are not seeing that footage in that video is because I was feeling so discouraged when I was filming it that I didn't feel like it was that much fun to watch and it certainly wasn't that much fun for me to film and I think you could really tell in the finished result. So I'm probably going to put that video up on Patreon, but I thought I would go ahead and film another attempt at a Halloween inspired everyday outfit using another fun quilting cotton. So this is the fun quilting cotton that I've picked. It is called Tidings of Great Joy for quilting treasures and it's actually a series of panels. So we have four of these ladies and I just think they're delightful. They're wearing these elaborate Edwardian or turn of the century costumes and they've got these really obnoxious hats. Like this one is a giant pumpkin pincushion on her head and I adore it and I really really like the costumes they're wearing. I think they're just a joy. So I purchased three panels of this fabric with the intentions of turning it into a skirt but I was going to make a rectangle skirt and when I gathered down the top edge I found that it really distorted their faces and I just wasn't happy with how it was looking. So I think I'm going to make a gourd skirt and kind of dart the tops of this and end up with something that is lightly flared but no matter what I do I'm not going to gather it down densely enough where I need all three panels for the skirt. So I'm thinking that I can use one of them to make a blouse following this pattern. So this is a Vogue pattern from the 1930s and it has pin tucks that shape the whole thing. I used it for the Venus blouse that I was supposed to be making a video about and I love how it turned out and I love how it fits. So I'm feeling quite confident about following this pattern once again and I think I'm also going to follow this pattern to make a pair of pants to go with it. So for the pants I purchased three yards of this twill. I will link it down below but I would not recommend it. I kind of wrote a scathing review about it. When I washed it, it bled dye everywhere and there are now these grayish blotches on it. Now this pattern is part of my Sewing Through the Decade series and hopefully the video about following it has already gone up. I actually really like the shape of the pants and the fit of them but I had some issues with the fabric I chose and the instructions for this pattern. Just the order in which things go together makes it a lot more difficult to follow than it should be and I feel like I can incorporate some of my own methods and follow their pattern pieces and end up with something I'm happier with. I feel like I might end up regretting some of the decisions I'm making today. Like the fact that I totally just cut off the additional seam allowance I was supposed to leave. That's great. I don't know how this is going to end up looking because the pin tucks kind of fall exactly where their heads are, but hopefully I can make it work. <laughs> I have to decide which lady I want to be on the other side. Do I want her or her? I think I want her. Now I can either try and piece the back out of these guys or I could just make the back plain black material. So now I'm going to go ahead and mark the various important markings. <laughs> An interesting thing about this pattern is that it doesn't mark dart with perforations. Instead it marks them with lines and you have to read the instructions to see if those lines signify a tuck or a dart or multiple tucks or multiple darts. Um, so they're really just the lines where you're supposed to fold the fabric as opposed to the lines where the fabric is supposed to meet. So it's very different from a modern pattern in that way. And I suppose quite different from the majority of the vintage patterns I've followed. But luckily the instructions for this aren't too in-depth. <laughs> um, so it's pretty easy to follow them. It's not like you have to dig through a huge paragraph of text every time you want to figure something out. So this is a dart right here. It's supposed to taper from a quarter inch down to nothing. And then this is an inverted dart here. So I shall sew those quickly. So now I'm going to focus on the front because that's everything that needs to be stitched for the back. I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera, but there are probably two dozen perforations on this piece and they all mean something. So there's quite a bit of transferring to do. So I'm just going to crease the fabric on the line of marking slash line of perforation and then do whatever they tell me to do. These are dart tucks, so there are two, and then these are just normal tucks. So I'm going to fold on that straight line and then sew an eighth of an inch away from it. So it's like a dart, but it doesn't taper off. I always forget that tucks are a thing that exists because they're not really done on modern clothing, but I wish I opted to incorporate them into my designs more often because they really do look fantastic. So 
I'm actually quite pleased because the pin tucks on the shoulder didn't distort the shape of the lady's faces too much, so that's great. But I've decided I don't like the back panel. I just think it's too busy and I don't think I'm going to wear this shirt as much if I'm self-conscious of how the back of it looks. So I'm thinking that I can use that to cut out the collar and then I'm just going to have the back be solid black. Um, I've seen that done on t-shirts before and I really don't mind how it looks so I think it'll be okay on this blouse too. But the only pre-washed black fabric I have is the one that I'm going to use for the pants. So I want to get the pants cut out first just to make sure that I have enough fabric left over. So I think that is going to be my next half. I feel like the world just really doesn't want me to have a nice pair of black pants. Pants. I've ordered, I think, three pairs of black pants from Unique Vintage, and they've all ended up being awful, and I've had to return them. And now this fabric is awful. Like, it's not meant to be. So for this pair of pants, I'm going to add two inches to the hem, and an inch and a quarter, yes, an inch and a quarter, to the sides, and then a quarter inch to the crotch. So I can stitch those as quarter inch French seams, um, and hopefully have it be a lot more durable. And I'm going to trace out my cutting lines with chalk, because otherwise I'm going to forget, and that's going to be bad. And I'm also just going to add an inch here to make it a little bit more high-waisted. I can't remember if I did that with the last pair, but I marked it on my pattern, so that means something. <laughs> Alright, so I'm glad I cut the pants out first because I really don't have a lot of fabric left over, but I think I have enough to cut this out. Hmm, not quite. <laughs> I'm going to have to sew a couple of pieces together, which is fine. And I'm going to use this to cut out the facing and the collar. I thought I was just going to end up using a white fabric, but if I have this on hand, then I would prefer to use this. So this is the collar all stitched up, and I'm just going to trim the seam allowance down and iron it. And I think I'm going to stitch a little bit of a black ruffled trim on it as well. So that is the collar. Uh, there are some seams on the back side since I cut it out of a piece that had seams in it. I kind of debated about actually making this the right side even though it has the seam because I think it's really funny how there's this uh, stitched together face. Or not funny, I guess, it's kind of creepy. But I think this side has a more consistent color palette and it looks better. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm going to add this ribbon trim on it. I picked this up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania on my most recent trip and I am obsessed with it. I just think it's the coolest. I don't think it's going to show up on camera because it's so dark, but it's got a really neat amount of texture and I think it would look perfect trimming the edge of this collar. So I think that's what I'm going to do. It's been about an hour since I last updated you. The collar is now finished and ready be to be attached to the bodice. So I just stitched that trim on that I mentioned and I sewed one edge on by hand, almost as basting stitches. Then I sewed the other edge on by machine so it is nice and secured and should hold up for as many washes as it goes through in its lifetime. So I'm really happy with that. I'm also pretty happy with how the bodice is coming along. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about the placement of these, but I did a quick little try on and I think it's very cute and different and not too over the top. I also really like the black backing on it, which is good because I cut apart the backing made from the ladies to create the collar, so I'd sort of be screwed if I hated it. <laughs> uh, so I just went ahead and sewed up the shoulder seams as well as the side seams, and then to make sure that it stays in position because the 12 fabric I'm using is quite thick compared to the cotton, I just top stitched the seam allowance down. So that needs to be ironed, and then I can add the collar and the facing and get it done. Oh, and while I've been working, I've been watching The Curious Creations of Christine McConnell, and if you haven't seen it, then go watch it. It's a Netflix original, and she is just fantastically talented, and I'm really uh, enjoying the parts of it I've watched so far. So you're probably already following her, because she's way more popular than I am, but if you aren't, then she's definitely someone to check out on Instagram. So this pattern comes with the facing that you can sew to the arm opening and then tuck inward, but I figured it wasn't necessary this time around, and I was just going to turn it inward by hand. But then I decided, or at least considered, adding trim around the arm openings, and quickly realized that I shouldn't be considering it, I should be doing it, because this is me we are talking about, and the more trim, and the more sparkles, and the more ruffles, the better. Uh, so that means that I can do it by machine, since all of this stitching is going to be 
be covered up. It's kind of annoying to do with the French seam, so I'm actually not stitching this completely evenly, and it looks pretty messy from the inside, but it's gonna be fine. But what I wanted to mention, turned on the camera for, is the fact that there's this very thin line that outlines all of the ladies in their own little boxes. And I have thought this was a stray black thread for like the past five minutes. It was trying to get it off and wondering why it was clinging so heavily to the material. Only to realize that it extends all the way around and is not a thread at all. So now I feel stupid and I'm just going to carry on adding ruffles. So these are what my pants look like now. As I said, I sewed the crotch seam and I also sewed the darts and tucks into them. So in the instructions, they tell you to stitch up the side seam and leave it open above this point. Then on one side you stitch in the zipper and on the other side you stitch in the pocket. But it's really difficult to do because the pocket kind of extends into the seam allowance but needs to be sewn on from the front side of the fabric so you don't really see the seam allowance and it was really hard to avoid puckers and I ended up just ripping it out several times before I finally got something that looked suitable. So the way I'm doing it is that I've sewn the pocket in now uh, and then I'm going to fold it at the center point of the pocket and stitch up the side seam all in one go. I'm actually probably going to do it as a French seam. I think I put enough seam allowance to do it that way. And then on the other side, I'm going to stitch it up to this point as a French seam and then sew in the zipper. So I think this is going to go a lot more smoothly and just be a lot easier all the way around. Once that's done, I can sew up the inseam and I will have an almost finished pair of pants aside from the belt and whatnot. Over here, I have the top and the trim puckered a little bit when I was stitching it on. It's probably my fault, but I don't want to take responsibility for it, so hopefully it will iron out, so I'm not really sure how well you can iron this trim. It might be something that requires steaming. I've also pinned the collar on, so now I'm just going to stitch the collar on with the 3 quarter inch allowance, and then I will sew the facing in to secure it properly. And speaking of the facing, I haven't cut that out yet, and that's probably what I'm going to do next. The facing consists of two pieces. This is the front portion, and this is the back portion, and I think I'm just going to have to cut these out of some sort of white cotton that I have hanging about, because I definitely don't have enough of the print material to do it and the black material is too dark I think it will show through and create a shadow effect. Something I love about this pattern is that they just have you top stitch the zipper in which is my favorite way to do it. It is so quick and it is so easy uh, but last time I made one of these I didn't have a zipper long enough to extend past the top edge so I ended up having that little bump from sewing around the zipper pull and this time I had one that was long enough so I got to avoid that and now I can trim this top portion off but I have to make sure that I remember to pull the zipper down first, otherwise I'm going to be very, very upset. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and sew on the waistband, and the way you sew on the waistband for this pattern, and I really liked how this went actually, I didn't think I was going to, but it was pretty great, is that you sew the back portion to the wrong side of the fabric, and then it flips up, and then you top stitch the front side down, and it looks very neat, and I was very pleased with it, so that's what I'm going to do. So these are the pants. I'm sorry for all the mess in front of the mirror, I'm kind of tight on space at the moment, but let me see what I can do. That didn't help. Uh, so I made these pants too long waisted, which is something that has never ever happened to me before. But basically when I was cutting this out, I added an inch to the top edge of the waistline, which I recalled doing on my mock-up, but I couldn't remember if it was something that I did or didn't do on the pair I made my Sewing Through the Decades video. And I really wish I hadn't because I could seriously pull these up to like right here under my boob and there would still be plenty of room in the crotch. So the way I've styled it is with a belt and I actually kind of like that the pants go up so high that they create almost a background for the belt. So I do think I'm going to get some wear out of these and I'm not too upset. The zipper looks good, the pocket works, um, it fits around my waist, always a good thing. And I can get it up too. The other ones are really tight going over my hips because I didn't have as much ease uh, and that isn't an issue with this one. So I'm happy about that. And now I just need to hem these and add some sort of closure to the waistband. I once thought that getting shorter hair would make me more likely to style it and that has definitely not been the case. Though I guess this could be considered some sort of a style. <laughs> I realized I haven't filmed a lot today, I guess, even though I've been in a mood to film and I've been super hyper and gotten a lot more done than I have any other day this week. Um, I think since these are projects or patterns that I followed before, I've been sort of vague talking about them and I'm not sure how much footage I actually have for this video. And I would absolutely hate for this video to be a mere 25 minutes instead of my usual 30. So I just asked for questions on Instagram and I'm going to ask a couple that come up while I hem the pants. And I've chosen to use a slightly different method for humming the pants. This is actually another method that was mentioned on the pattern. I really, really liked the instructions on this pattern, um, except for the whole pocket debacle. So I sewed some bias binding onto the top raw edge of the hem, and then I folded it inward by about an inch. In hindsight, I wish I had trimmed the raw edge of the hem with pinking shears first, because now I have a whole bunch of loose threads that I'm going to have to go in and clip. 
but it shouldn't be too difficult. And it's a relatively near hem, so hopefully it won't take me very long to do. It's a relatively short hem. The width of the hem doesn't actually impact how long it takes to sew. <laughs> I also just wanted to incorporate binding in some manner so I could show you my new bias binding collection. So recently my mom went up to Canada and visited her mother and her aunt and she brought back a whole bunch of vintage bias binding for me and I'm so excited. I've color coordinated it because obviously that is the thing to do. But look at some of this packaging. That's my favorite of the packaging but it's really just neat seeing how packaging has developed. Like this one looks quite 60s to me. I just absolutely adore this. A lot of it is like too precious for me to ever use but that's okay because it looks very pretty in its box. So let's see if we have any questions and let's get to sewing. I should really do a fitting with these after I pin them but I'm not going to. <laughs> I feel like getting hems perfectly even when you make clothing for yourself is kind of just a lost cause because no matter how many times you put it on dress form or try it on it always looks different after you actually sew it. And I don't know why, maybe that's just me and I'm a total failure, but I, I feel like me and perfect hems are just not meant to be. All right, so let's move on to questions. So I see two that are asking about what books I use to learn how to sew. And I didn't really use books because I learned when I was very, very young, um, just sort of by playing around with the sewing machine, which probably wasn't super safe. In fact, it definitely wasn't safe. I've got a huge scar on one of my fingers from a seam ripper. And then I took lessons where I was taught some basics when I was probably about eight. I took a year of lessons with my brother. Um, and then I didn't sew for a long time until I got into cosplay. Anyway, I have a blog post all about the reference books that I use. It's kind of outdated, but a lot of my favorites are listed there, as well as mini write-ups um, about all of them. So I will link that down below. As for super beginner books, pattern companies used to make from like the 1920s to the 1980s, I think, and maybe they still make them, uh, but guidebooks for beginners that take you through a lot of basic stitches, as well as how to sew in a facing and identifying what a facing actually is. So I think if you're really unfamiliar with terminology and the very basics of sewing, that that is a good place to start. A couple of people asked if I have a favorite time period, or if there's a time period I'm currently loving. Um, I'm really obsessed with bustle dresses right now just because I've never successfully made fun, and I would really like to, but that definitely isn't my favorite period overall. I probably prefer the 1860s I would say or the 1630s I love myself some Stuart fashion and I'm also into the 1930s right now which has never been a period I particularly loved but I discovered this book that I will link down below and it is just glorious the fashion plates included in it and I want to make all of them especially the coats I want all of the 1930s coats and someone else asked how did I gain confidence in my technique I do not have any confidence in my technique <laughs> I'm very aware that I'm not the best seamstress but I try and I keep working at it and I think I've seen improvements in my work um, and I think being driven to improve is more important than necessarily being confident with your current skill level so some people definitely deserve to be confident with their skill level because they're amazing. <laughs> Someone else asked if I will do an updated sewing room tour. I definitely, definitely will. Um, I had planned on doing one a couple months ago, but I'm glad I didn't because I kind of switched things around. But I definitely need to get around to doing one. Maybe once I work through some of my piles of fabric right before I go shopping and buy fabric for Christmas. That, that's probably going to be the sweet spot when this room is at its emptiest and cleanest. Um, do I prefer hand or machine sewing? I find machine sewing really frustrating a lot of times because I feel like it's less flexible than hand sewing. But I also absolutely despise sewing seams by hand or anything that has to have structural integrity. Um, so I definitely appreciate having a machine for sewing as well and I wouldn't want to sew uh, without a machine in my arsenal. Someone asked if I have any personal sewing goals that I want to work on in the next year. I'd say just to be more consistent and more driven. Um, the past few weeks I've had a horrible time sewing and I've just been feeling really down on myself and really frustrated and I haven't gotten a lot of work done. been going in with this defeated attitude and then been proven that all of my work is crap and it's just been really destructive and I'd like to be able to work even when I don't feel like working and even when I feel really negatively about the work that I'm creating. I think it's important to be able to kind of separate yourself from that especially when you, you work for yourself and you're the only person to motivate yourself. It, that's something I need to work on especially as I get older and as I kind of transition into doing this as an actual job as opposed to just a little hobby thing on the side. Here's a really crucial question. If you had to be a vegetable, what vegetable would you be and why? That's a weirdly difficult question to answer, but I would definitely be a root vegetable of some sort because the thought of being embraced by dirt and darkness for the majority of your life sounds quite comforting. But I guess we're all eventually embraced by dirt for the majority of our years when we're no longer present on this earth. So someday, Oh, I like this one. Are there any sewing rules that you disregard or think are silly? My thought process on sewing is that it's a creative thing and it's just not that serious. 
there are a thousand ways to do every single step you can possibly imagine. And I think it's great if you want to experiment with methods and maybe those methods won't be the most efficient or the most structurally sound or the fastest or the best, but they are still a method. And if you want to try them, then I think that's cool. So I'd say most methods I think are kind of silly to a certain degree because a lot of people view them as the only method when they're not. I hope that makes sense. When asked what my favorite vintage style piece is, whether it's handmade, given, or purchased, no one has given me vintage clothing, which is deeply upsetting because I think I deserve it. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's really hard because a lot of my favorite pieces visually haven't been the pieces that I've gotten a lot of wear out of. I still really love those pants I have from Collective just because they sort of started this whole wardrobe change. And I also really love some of the royal vintage shoes I have. Those just bring me a lot of joy and I think they're incredibly versatile. As for an actual vintage garment, I'm not sure if I can pick one. It's tough when like your favorite pieces visually aren't the ones you've really worn and then the ones that you don't really love the look of have ended up being really integral to your wardrobe. It makes it difficult to balance which ones are actually your favorite. So I don't have an answer for that question, and that's gonna be the last question that I answer. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch a buttonhole into these pants and stitch on a button, and then they'll be so done. So I'm gonna cut the facing out of Symphony Broadcloth. I actually despise Symphony Broadcloth. I don't know if you guys have worked with it or if you have specific thoughts on it, but I just feel like it's such a crisp, awful fabric. It never seems to sew very well for me. Also saying I forgot about is the fact that this garment has shoulder pads, so I need to cover a set of those tonight. They actually, whoops, give you a little tippity tap there. They actually have instructions for making the shoulder pads and they want them to be one inch thick towards the shoulder, which is crazy. I'd say shoulder pads are normally about five eighths of an inch thick near the shoulder and that's on the larger side. Also, one of my nails chipped on the first day. This is why I only use glitter polishes. They don't portray me like this, like normal drugstore nail polishes do. I get questions about my nail polish sometimes, and I say 90% of the nail polish I own is from indie brands. So from Live Love Polish or Cupcake Polish or Starly or something like that. I feel like the quality of their polishes is better and they tend to be a lot more unique, which I like. And now this Vogue 1930s pattern can go in my turn of the century Vogue pattern cabinet. It's like it's meant to be. Except for the fact that they changed the standard pattern size so none of my modern patterns or patterns from the 1940s onward fit in this. But it is what it is. <laughs> so now I just have to sew the two parts of the facing together and then turn this outer edge inward by machine. And I'm going to sew this edge onto the bodice with the right sides facing each other. And it gets turned inward and slip stitched into the interior of the bodice. So that is what I'm going to spend the next 15 or 20 minutes doing. So I really wanted to get this done tonight since I have another project to photograph tomorrow and I thought I could get both of them photographed at once and it was going to be awesome, but my sewing machine is not behaving. For some reason, the buttonhole worked perfectly on my test samplers, but it is not working on the actual fabric. Uh, so it's for some reason straight stitching one side and then zigzagging and it just looks terrible and it's not very functional. And then on my other uh, fabric when I was trying to sew the buttonhole into the pants, it wasn't even activating the buttonhole option. It was just zigzagging back and forth. So I had to rip out a whole bunch and I attempted it probably four times. Now the fabric's really damaged at that point because I've gone over it so many times with stitching. So I don't know what's wrong, but I don't think I'm going to get very far with fixing it tonight. So I'm probably going to leave that for another day um, and we'll see how it goes tomorrow morning. <laughs> a couple days later now and I'm just getting this project finished up. Uh, I meant to work on it yesterday, but we actually had a little celebration for my dad's birthday. Uh, so I was busy cleaning and then attending that. But my buttonhole stitch is better, but still not working on this fabric. There are just too many layers near the waistband and it would not sew the buttonhole properly. So I tried to zigzag it, but it still wouldn't work. And it is the ugliest buttonhole I've ever seen in my entire life. And I am totally ashamed of it. Um, I fray checked it a whole bunch of times. So now there's almost white residue around it. And it's just very disappointing. But luckily I'm planning on wearing these pants with a belt. So you shouldn't see that too often. The buttonholes on the blouse went a little bit better. Though it still had some problems doing the ends of them and completing the full circuit of the buttonhole. Uh, at least it was sewing the density properly and it wasn't jamming. So I've just cut all of these open and then fray checked them and I'm gonna stitch on all of the buttons. Every single time I do automatic buttonhole, I forget about the button actually in the buttonhole foot. 
And then I end up one button short and I'm all confused. Except for this time when I apparently remember that button, yet I'm still one button short. Hmm. So as you can probably tell, the blouse is completed and so are the pants. After sewing on all the buttons, I just stitched in some shoulder pads and it was done. And I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Even though I really enjoyed working on this project, I did kind of have my doubts about the fit of the pants. I thought I made them too high-waisted to be flattering and wearable on a regular basis. And I thought the placement of the ladies on the front of the blouse looked a little bit cheesy. I still really enjoyed making it and I was still excited to make it, but I wasn't sure if there were pieces I was actually gonna get a lot of wear out of. But I think they are. I think they're both really cute and really flattering. And I especially love the blouse. I think it's really interesting and I think the print placement worked out really nicely. It doesn't look too costumey and jarring, but also has a whimsical twist, which I always enjoy having in my work. I ended up pairing the ensemble with some black and white shoes from Royal Vintage, along with my animal belt that has all of these cute studded creatures on it, and then this hat, which I got from an antique store for $3.75. And I think altogether this ensemble looks really, really sleek, and I can't wait to get some more wear out of it throughout the season. Hope you enjoyed watching the adventure of making this. I haven't gone through the footage yet so I don't know how much I have and how good it was but I really hope you enjoyed it and that you've enjoyed all of my content throughout October and just in general I know I've been making a lot of videos focusing on more casual garments recently and not the elaborate historical costumes that you necessarily originally subscribed for but I really enjoyed making these videos and I really appreciate the support on them and you guys allowing me to make them. <laughs> I'm actually filming this mid-October, but I do have some more elaborate costume plans coming up for the following months, so maybe that will give you something to look forward to and to subscribe for if you haven't already. I'd also really appreciate if you could give this video a like and a comment if you enjoyed it. That really helps me out. And I shall talk to all of you very soon.